The last time we met, it was a draw, and what a bloody game it was. Let's rewind. The last time we played Essendon was round seven this year, Anzac Day, and it was a draw. 85 all, the second draw on Anzac Day um, in 19 years. Obviously, the first one was a draw, and this one was a draw. And it was just one of those games that was topsy-turvy and a typical Collingwood game in the scheme of what our season was at the start of the year. Um, Essendon came out hard, and they just put us to the sword. They won the first nine of 11 contested possessions. They kicked the first four goals. They had the first, like... Uh, I think over half a dozen inside 50s. But this game, for most of the part anyway, was mainly Essendon. They, they got out to a nearly a 30-point lead in um, the first quarter or towards the, towards the end of that first quarter. And we just couldn't put goals on. We kicked two goals, six in the first quarter. At one point, we were, um, I think we were like four goals, 10 or something like that. We were just missing them left, right, and center. And it would come back to bite us a little bit later on um, in the day. But, you know, a bit of foreshadowing. But um, it was credit to Essendon. They were, you know, this is when they were absolutely flying. And they just took our game apart. They were winning center clearances. They were winning just clearances in general. Um, they scored, you know, at, at the end of the game, they, they won clearances 40 to 23. And scored 43 from uh, 43 points against our nine points from stoppages. Um, but obviously, you know, our game is sort of that intercept game. Um, and we won the intercepts 24-16 and scored um, 35-15 to from intercepts. But in saying that, we were ranked number one in clearances and stoppages uh, at this point. And Essendon just, just came out and, and gave it to our lives. And it was just, just a very roller coaster -y game. And, and I said it at the time, and, I, and I'll say it again. A draw is probably deserve it. In that last quarter, before Langford kicked that point, it was 15 minutes between us kicking the point and Langford kicking the point when there was no score. 15 minutes of just toing and froing a seesawing affair right at the right at the end there. So I think the the uh, you know especially after half time the draw was deserved and it was just yeah it was very deflating. I hadn't been to a draw in so long and I just remember being so deflated. If you remember that video, Dad won money on the draw because he bet on the draw. Um, but the game in general, Zach Merritt had an absolute day out. Jamie Elliott makes, you know, mark of the century and, and could well on go and, and win mark of the year. Elliott had a good game. Checkers kicked, I think, 3-3. Three, three. He missed a couple of set shots right at the end of the game that we could have won it. Will Hoskin Elliott at the end of the game as well that could have won it. Um, Scott Pernabry got 10,000 disposals. Uh, but we were really... We were really exposed. I think Essendon did a lot to, to expose us, get us on that overlap run that we know has come to sort of fruition where everyone is sort of doing that to us now. But they got us at the at the um, at our source, which was that stoppage, which was that which was those clearances, uh, and they really nullified any sort of uh, ascendancy that we had from that spot. Um, you know, they they were winning the uncontested, they were they were winning the contested as well. So there's a lot of learnings that can come out of that game, but again, that was round seven. We're in round, what, 17? So that was 10 rounds ago, which is about 11 or 12 weeks or something. Uh, and there's a lot to, a lot has played out and a lot's different. I think we're a better team now than we were then, and I know that's weird because we just lost to the Suns and we didn't play good football, but I think we were definitely a better team now than we were um, back then. But there are definitely lessons because we know that the Essendon are good at their clearances. We've seen it. We can't let them come out and have a fast start like that. They kicked six goals one in that first quarter. They, they just, they did so, so bloody well. And then that was the sort of, it was that one. And then next week we played Port Adelaide and they kicked five goals straight or something in that, in that first quarter. So that was starting to be a pattern starting from this Essendon game. And it's something that they'll probably look at, or not probably, they'll definitely look at uh, because, you know, it's what Essendon do best. Um, and you can only learn from your past and you hope that you don't repeat it. Some standouts from this game were Nick Dacos, uh, 27 disposals. He was tagged a little bit, but he had 600 meters gained. Harvey Harrison came on as the sub, took that really good mark, kicked that really good goal, uh, and he sort of cemented himself as, as some this sort of clutch player that, that could have been that sort of Ginevan type. This was when Mitchell was playing, so now we're without Mitchell. Jordan Dugowie was playing as well. Um, it was just... Yeah, it was, it was weird. 
it was one of those games where we're known for our close games and we're known for holding teams if we were in front by a little bit. We were the, the highest margin that we had in front was seven points and that was with less than two minutes to go and we give that away. And then you look at the Gold Coast game, we were in front by a point and we give that away. And then you look at the Fremantle game. So we have been known to be this close finishing side, um, but this year... I think the law of averages is kind of averaging that out, and it really started with this Essendon game, and we've got to do things, put them in place, especially around those center clearances. We learn from those mistakes, and like I said, we just don't repeat them. So tell me, what was your moment of the last time we played them of the Anzac Day in round seven? Uh, mine, obviously, was Jamie Elliott's screamer. Uh, he's mark of the century, but... Pendlebury getting 10,000 disposals. I can't believe I was there, and obviously a lot of other people were there to witness that um, historic moment. It won't happen again. But anyway, guys, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'll see you at the game tonight. But until then, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And I'll tell you, so double shackers. I'll sweep you later. Yeah, and obviously the. <coughs>